Hello, and welcome to Underpaid Gamers Podcast. My name is Tony. I am with my friend and colleague, Justin. What's up? There he is. Here I am. Today, as we have promised weeks in advance, is going to be Trophy Talk episode, where we talk about trophies and my race to get as many Platinums as possible before Horizon Zero Dawn came out. That's true. And it's been what a race to watch. Boy, did I. (laughs) Boy, did I get a lot of them. Yes, he did. Before that, we have some news. We do. But before that, theme song. Nice. The Underpaid Gamers is the official podcast of underpaidgamers.com. Dot com. You can find us on Twitter at UP Gamers Podcast. That's true. You can find us on iTunes and SoundCloud mm-hmm. and Stitcher and Google Play Music. Mm-hmm. Like us on Facebook. We have a page there. We do. Follow us on Instagram. We got that. You, we, the, uh, uh, our biggest segments that you can get in contact with us is YouTube and Twitch. That's true. So that's the most fun. There you have it. I think that's pretty much it. Big things are happening. Yep. Here in the Underpaid Gamers world. Lounge in the land in the land of the land under, down under the underpaid land of gamers. Yep, yep. The most poor land in the kingdom. Yes, the poorest of all of the kingdoms is here, and we reign. We're not peasants though. We are not, but we're still poor. <laughs> let's move forward. Let's do some news. <laughs> yes, let's jump so, in. So, Nintendo Switch news. Get that out in front. Two things happened recently, but in the last week. Mm-hmm. Number one, there's not going to be any. Virtual console for Switch at launch. Uh, no digital downloads of any game. Wah, wah. Of the three games that are coming out at launch, you can't digitally download any of them. Well, that's probably good because there's not enough space on the Switch to download any of these games anyways. Speaking of space on the Switch, the Switch comes with a 32 gig internal memory. Yes, as we've covered for a few weeks now. And some of that obviously gets taken up by processing power and just what it takes to run it. Yeah, sure. In the recent week... It has been confirmed that one of the games, Dragon Quest Heroes, will need at least 32 gigs for the Nintendo <laughs> Switch, which means you have to buy well, external memory. Dang. Which is not included in the Switch price. Dang it. Switch- we, we already think that it's a little bit overpriced. This does not help. If it had better memory, it would be accurately priced. But it right. has bad memory. It, it has no memory. I mean... There's- it's Come on. there's uh, it comes out March third and a lot of people have gotten their hands on it early. I haven't watched any videos because I'm not gonna buy it. Mm-hmm. At least not March third. Like why would I? I'm not a big fan of Zelda. What else is there? Uh, Splatoon. No, That's not a launch game. Not launch though. Man, I don't know. I, I remember hearing uh, this week the dude who like got the Nintendo Switch mailed to him like two weeks early. Yeah. Nintendo like made a big deal about it and told him he stole the game. There's like a message. Did you hear about that last week when we discussed it on the podcast? Yes. Interesting. Awkward. Glad to hear that you listen to our podcast. I we do think. sometimes. Much like the listeners, you listen <laughs> as well. I do. Um, hum, bum, bum, bum. So, a little addendum from last week. Okay. Turns out, in chronological order, Ben Affleck was the director of Batman. Next, Matt Reeves was in discussions to be director of Batman. Next... He was no longer the director. Turns out he's going to be the director now. He is the director, <laughs> officially. I saw it on at least three websites. Is directing The Batman, which is what people are calling the movie. Yes, I apparently. Don't that's a, I don't think that's the official title. But now he's back. And so if you want to hear our thoughts on him, listen to like listen. two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben Affleck is not mad about it. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I read, I I saw, I read some uh, an article about it. He's not mad. He welcomed him. Which is probably good, because I don't think that he really wanted to after all the flack, which we talked about last week. So let's keep We've going. talked about it a lot. Yes, we have. Um, ba ba bum Neil Druckmann, speaking of movies, Neil Druckmann, mm. creative director behind Uncharted and most importantly, The Last of Us, mm. director, writer, game designer, has said and gone on record multiple times that Naughty Dog is not in cahoots at all with the person that's writing the Uncharted movie script. He does no not, one has read it? He does not have his blessing. No one at Naughty Dog has read the script. Dang. But the director or the writer keeps saying that the naughty guy, naughty dog guys know and they have his blessing. And Neil Druckmann has gone on Twitter multiple times like, "That's not we've true. We've never read it. <laughs> we don't. He doesn't have our blessing." Dang. I wonder who he's referencing then? Is it just like the CEO or something? Probably just like Sony. Probably. Probably people at Sony. It's somebody above Neil Druckmann yeah. who's saying it's okay. So Neil Druckmann's like, I have not read the script. And it's not his. I don't. I guess it's not his like personal intellectual property, I would assume. Neither is The Last of Us. Yeah, sure. 
So I guess Sony the can do whatever they want. Yeah. But Neil Druckmann's like, I have no say in this. Like, this is not me. <laughs> Just to be clear, if this movie sucks, not my fault. That's right. It's climbing it now. Hmm. Han Solo? Han Solo. Movie. Uh, there's some movie? Mo- there's mo- movie, question mark, or movies? No. Rumor alert! No. Some people say, particularly IGN, had a little comment about Han Solo being a trilogy as opposed to a standalone? No. Question mark, question mark, question mark. I hope no. not. I hope it's a one and done. I don't think that we need a whole trilogy of Han Solo movies. Agreed. Uh, st- stylistically, they're taking the approach of a Western, uh, using the influence of uh, Western art to base their color designs and their outfits and things, uh, which makes sense because many people have referred to the Star Wars original Star Wars trilogy as being a space western. Makes sense that they would return to that for the Han Solo film with him being like the ultimate cowboy, right? Explain that. It's more of an opera. Yeah, it's a space opera, but some people space call it western a, opera. Space western. They, they like carry on guns on their sides. I guess that's true. They've got like they're like chasing the bad guys. Kind of through the through space, but kind of like through the, the wilderness. Through the wilderness, I don't. Know, it's it's somewhat like a western, in some ways. There's sand. There's <laughs> yeah, and they hate sand. Dirt. At least Anakin hates sand. So, anyways, uh, wouldn't it be more like a samurai movie? I don't know. It's like a mixture. It's kind of weird because a western samurai. I mean, I feel like there are western elements to it, right? Like, think of the first one. I'm trying the, to. The princess is captured by the Empire. Okay, so Mario. And they get a bunch of... <laughs> <laughs> they put together a, a posse to go grab them. A posse. It's like a, it's like a heist movie, too, right? Like, they, they infiltrate, steal the princess back, try and run away. They follow them to the, to the rebel base. Uh, I don't know. We're just mixing in a lot of things here. This is kind of just like a... It's like a... It's a space opera, most of all, I would say. Yeah, sure. I See... Westerns are more like about isolation and like individualism, I would say. Hmm. Maybe the best Westerns. I don't know. Magnificent Seven wouldn't be, and that's like a classic one. Or like uh, a lot of John Wayne movies, there's like a small group You mean of the guys. original Magnificent Seven, the, not, the, not, the not the Chris Pratt, not the Chris Onofrio yes, no. remake. The original. Um, thinking like a, but they're, they're like against all odds. Right, which I, is kind of like what Star Wars is, if you think about it. At least the original trilogy. I mean... Even the new If you watch episode. So if someone watched Star Wars Episode 4 for the first time, yeah. would they feel like Luke and the Rebels were against all odds? Or do, would they feel like they have the upper hand because they have the they have the plans? Uh I mean I think or what the, do you think? I think the feeling that they're trying to get across is that it would be against, against all, all odds. odds. I mean the Empire's shown as so evil, like when he goes back and sees his aunt and uncle burned to a crisp on the ground. And That's just, a very short scene. I totally forgot about it. It is a very short scene. And just all the... all the, There's a lot of talk about how much the Empire sucks. So if it's the Western, the Empire is the U.S. government? Perhaps. Or is it the Native Americans? I don't know. That are taking back their land? Yeah, it... I don't know. Because Luke Skywalker would then have to be a lone cowboy. Mm-hmm. Which kind of... Not really. I'm trying to... I, I almost think it's more like The Magnificent Seven than I originally said when I said that. <laughs> because what's the purpose of The Magnificent Seven? Well, there's But is The Magnificent warlord. Seven a classical Western, or does it just kind of take place in the West? It's a classic Western. Really? A Western classic. Yeah. But it's... The original Magnificent Seven? But for the sure. original Magnificent Seven is a remake of The Seven Samurai, which is not a Western. That's true, but it's put in Western context. So... Just because you put it in something Western, that makes it a Western? Or does it have to have Western themes? I mean, while it does, you you think like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, mm-hmm. think Butch Cassidy True. and Sundance True. Kid, those are like the classic Westerns that are made for Westerns, whereas Magnificent Seven is a remake of Seven Samurai, which I guess I mean, you could say is a Western. it's inspired by, I don't, it's... I mean, they're almost beat for beat just in different locations on the globe. That's true. But how similar are Samurais and Cowboys? I don't know. I don't know, give me a, give me a thesis here. Give me a thought. To what extent are How cowboys are of the Old West similar to stories of samurais in the East? A, I don't know. That's not a good to the That was a question. That wasn't even a thesis. <laughs> so give me some pointers. How are they similar? I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking fight like... by themselves? Kind of on the edge, the, on the fringes of society. They're right? warriors. Uh, are, cow, are you saying cow, are cowboys warriors? No, or not cowboys really. farmers. Cowboys are glorified 
cattle people. Yeah. <laughs> Literally in the name. Yeah. Samurais are Boys more like... Boys of cows. I mean, samurai are more like knights of medieval history. They're warriors. They're like... They're like warrior knights They're part of the paid. army. Well, they... It's they, like the Red Guard. The royal Sort, sort of, but... Army. Japan didn't have a national army. They had Because regional, their samurai were so freaking good. They had regional armies paid for by their lords. They're more like knights than anything else. Okay. I know, because I just taught about Japanese history there recently. There you go. The daimyo, man. The nobles. They had their own samurai. They're like a paid class of people... To sit around and not mercenaries. The land. Mercenaries is what you're saying. <laughs> Samurais are the original sort mercenaries. Of. They just enforce the will of the lord, the daimyo. Yeah. I don't daimo. Know if, I don't know if I'm. Yeah, probably daimyo. I don't pronounce it right, but I don't know. So what are there? Have we agreed or disagreed or no. not inconclusive? There's, inconclusive. What are this? I don't have strong opinion. I haven't. I haven't done enough I'm research. Specifically, cowboys versus I just, samurai, uh, based on our limited knowledge of both. You know, I think how they're depicted in film is similar. I don't think, in reality, most cowboys aren't what are shown in cowboy movies. Okay. So what makes a Western to you? Let me have it. Mm-hmm. What, are you, what are your thoughts? And then let's compare that to mm-hmm. Star Wars. Because we're, we're, we're going all in. I guess this, we are. I was not prepared to talk about this Small little today. tangent, but we've taken yeah, it and yeah. we ran with it. Uh, a Western movie in classical form... Has to be about one of a few things. Okay. The driving storyline has to be either revenge of some sort. Okay. Or justice of some sort. So either A, someone has been wronged and the main characters from the start are going to like get revenge against this big group. Characters or, or character. Character or characters. It can be okay. plural. I'm thinking because like the Sons of Katie Elder, think like a bunch of old John Wayne films. Okay. I don't know how much you watch John Wayne. It sounds like I you'd be more Clint Eastwood. Which I don't watch a lot of Clint Eastwood, but I've seen a ton of, of John Wayne ones. Um, in those, it's always like some group has wronged you. A small group. A small no, group. a large group has it wronged could be, a small group. It can be. It can or be the, either way. The small group is kind of like the survivors. But it's essentially based around a small group, right? It's never mm-hmm. like a huge army versus another huge sure, army. Sure, So I'm thinking, right now I'm thinking 310 to Yuma. Which yeah. Which is a great western. That was a great That's one. like three people so intense. versus... A larger army. Yeah. So a, a basis we have is it's kind of one or few against the world is yeah. kind of the viewpoint they give. Yeah, just up against the odds. You know, up against the odds. I think of... What's that one? <sighs> but it's normally without backup. It's normally like without... Like, they're out there. Yeah. About, they don't expect to have anybody show up. Mm-hmm. They don't have backup. They don't have anything to fall back onto. They have only their skills and their guns at their side. And their wit and their... Their grit. Their grit. Their wit and their grit. To make the day win. And they're a lot of times willing to sacrifice themselves for the end. And a lot of times in Westerns they do. They do sacrifice everything. So, I don't think episode four, A New Hope, Mm -hmm. is very Western-y. But I do think that Han Solo himself is Mm Western-y. Bounty Hunter. He also says yeehaw when he comes back in the Millennium Falcon at the end. He does. Which is a very cowboy term. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think you can draw parallels between flying in space, like the Millennium Falcon being chased by TIE fighters, and like... To like on horseback? To like a horseback chase scene. Yeah. But that's... Because Star- Han Solo specifically, not the whole sure. A New Hope. But A New Hope, I mean... Because Han Solo would be the cowboy. I don't think Luke would be the cowboy. Mm-hmm. He would be more like the... The sidekick? The prodigy type thing, right? Yeah. So that's kind of a different movie. He's like the main character prodigy that has... But I can, the, He has an elder that helps mm-hmm. him. Cowboys are normally... I can't think of very many cowboy themes where the cowboy is just learning how to be a cowboy. It's normally he's been out there for a couple of years. He's been right. doing it. He has all these skills already because he's mm-hmm. out. He's a loner. Sure. Whereas Luke is like, I know nothing. Teach me. Right. Kind of like an I mean, it book. could even be like... A stagecoach western, right? Like they hire some rough and tough cowboy to take, t- to take them somewhere. From point A to point B. Right, and uh, they they're not like necessarily cowboys themselves, but they have to be protected, and that's Han Solo. Because that's kind of Han Solo's role in episode four is like take me to Alderaan. Oh no, I guess that's true. That didn't work. Alderaan's gone. But I guess let's get out of here. Great escape. But today I never thought of Han Solo as a protecting figure. I always thought of like Obi Wan as a protecting figure. And Han Solo is he just does a really crappy job of that. He kills himself. Like make, <laughs> yeah, but he cuts the guy's hand off. 
at the very beginning. That's true. And he gets past his stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. With his mind tricks. Yeah. So he's like the all-powerful wizard. Sure. And then Han Solo, I feel like, is more of a, a bounty. I mean, he's obviously a bounty hunter type a thing. Smuggler. A smuggler. Mm-hmm. Which could be equivalent to a cowboy, because cowboys can be bounty hunters. Sure. But I don't know if I would ever give him, like, if we were going to make a team comp, mm-hmm. he wouldn't be, like, the tank. That would be Obi-Wan. I would no, think. Chewbacca would be the tank. He'd be the muscle. He'd be, like, the DPS. Dude, Obi-Wan would not be the tank. You don't think so? You don't no, think dude. he'd be the... He'd be, like, the support class. What? Who would Luke be? Luke would be, like... The flanker? He'd be the villager. Like, if we're going to, like, <laughs> he's like fire him. He's, like, the villager that levels up real fast and has, like, good stats at the end of the game. I guess so. He's, I guess that's true. He sucks at the beginning. Like, Donald. So you think... <laughs> Donnie. Donnie. So you think Chewbacca would be the tank that would... Obi Wan be because Obi Wan's a physical. Uh, he would be more offense, but also because he has like force powers, he'd be uh, more like if we're doing it to classic fantasy, he'd be more like the wizard, like the like the offensive, but with magic, black mage, kind of, kind of like a glass jaw, okay, if you will. So high DPS, high DPS, but low, low defense. defense. And you think Chewie would be high defense, high defense, low DPS? Would Han? Would Solo do? Uh, he'd high be, mobility. He'd be more like dex, dexterous, dexterous. Uh, I'm trying to think. He would have high dexterity. He would have like gun tricks. McCree. He'd be like McCree. So a western. Yeah. So a cowboy. <laughs> so he's back to the cowboy <laughs> example here. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think I need him to think more about this western stuff. Did you? Get, I'm gonna sign you homework. Okay. Dude, make, write an article about how. About how the parallels of Han Solo to the classic Western Western hero. That'd be fun. That'd be fun for It'd you. Be, it would be interesting to look into. And once I finish this trimester, next trimester is looking to be a little bit uh, easier on the workload. So. When does this trimester end? Uh, it ends technically grades are due Tuesday. So what? Right when Horizon comes out? Oh uh, no! Uh, so Tuesday is the start of the new trimester. Tomorrow is my work day to get everything graded and so oh, yeah, for yeah. the new trimester. So, Horizon is coming out on Tuesday. Yeah, it is. Super exciting. Pumped? So, I've only gotten more pumped. At, you, first, at first, you were like, oh my gosh, Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm like, dude, why are you so excited? It's going to suck. And then, <laughs> and then I was like, Prey looks really sick. And Prey I think we're both, sick. we're like, you were originally like, Prey, bang. I think I know, I as keep, we've gotten closer to both, we've both been getting more excited for the other one. I keep seeing Prey things and like the videos that they release. I'm like, that looks really cool. And then they release some other videos of like, it was like all the things that you can turn into, and it's always mm-hmm. just like this small thing rolling on the ground. <laughs> so like a ball or a coffee right. mug. I think that's just like the puzzle mechanics. I know. Though, I'm just and like the, and the uh, stealth mechanics. There's a there's a Steam game called Hidden. I think no, not Hidden. Prop Hunt. It's called Prop Hunt. Mm. That a couple streamers play that I used to watch. I don't watch them anymore. And you could essentially you're that thing and prey where you can go and you could pick something, and then you become that thing and you hide. And you're supposed to hide for a certain amount of minutes. And there's other people hunting you that are also players, mm-hmm. and they're supposed to notice the small little things that change throughout the level, and then from that you then uh, you like attack that prop. So that's what that reminded me of. I'm like, I don't know if that looks very cool. So I'll have to see more about Prey. I am getting very excited for it. I'm also getting a good amount of excited for Mass Effect, although that's coming out right after Horizon, mm-hmm. literally three days, and I don't know if I'm gonna need another RPG at that time. Right yeah, I'm Horizon. not. My level of excitement for Mass Effect is, like, it's po- net positive, but it's, like, there's a scale of, like, 1 to 100. I'm, like, at a 5. Like, I will get it eventually. Oh, 1 to 100? It's a it's, 5? Yeah, but, well, neg- <laughs> to negative 100 on the on the not excited oh, for Oh, gosh. It. So I'm, like, like I know Barely that it's going to be good, probably. You hope it's going to be good. But I'm not, like, going to buy it when it comes out. I'll eventually pick it up, probably. Probably when it's, like... Less than thirty dollars. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, we'll see. People have been saying that Horizon's like thirty hours, forty hours long. So that, I mean, that's a good amount of time. Sure. That's a work week. If you took that a whole is. work week off. Um, but yeah, so Horizon. A lot of people have gotten their review copies early, and mm-hmm. I wanted to talk to you. What do you think is the best way to go into a game like this? Do you want to mm-hmm. have already been committed and say I'm excited for this game? I don't want to know sure. anything more. Sure. Or do you want to kind of? Not at everything that they're releasing because mm-hmm. everyone has a non disclosure agreement, everyone has a uh embargo that they can't lift, so yeah, they can yeah. they don't do spoilers, they don't do this stuff, they don't do this stuff. So, what have what have you been doing 
Mm. And what would you have liked to do? Sure. Uh, you know, I I kind of go back and forth on this, and I think it depends on the type of game being released. Like, if it's a very story-driven game, mm-hmm. then I want to avoid all content like The Plague. Which kind of goes back to our Prey thing last week. We watched yeah. a video on Prey that kind of spoiled the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. And that would have been such an amazing experience to have. Fresh, like, actually, as I played it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that um, was sick. So it makes me a little bit sad that I got less out of that than I would have had I not paid attention to what was going on. But I again, think a game like early. Horizon is not necessarily so much about the story. It's more about, like, the experience. The, like gameplay. the gameplay experience. The world that they've created, just exploring it, hunting, what all I, stuff. So for that, like, being able to see the the combat in action makes me more excited to play it. Oh, yeah? You know, and I think that Horizon Zero Dawn is one that I think it's okay that I digest a lot of the new stuff. Really? See, what I heard is that the story is very good. Well, the story is good, mm-hmm. probably very good, not great, maybe mm-hmm. great, not perfect. So it's not like The Last of Us, where mm-hmm. that has an incredible story and characters, sure. Sure. where probably you could say The Last of Us gameplay isn't the most appealing factor. Sure. Uh, this one, you could say the gameplay is the most appealing factor, yeah. the open world, the exploration, whereas... The, the story can kind of go by the wayside. Sure. Um, so I've been trying to... I watched a video review of just people talking about it. Mm-hmm. And I watched IGN's review, which is like six minutes long, and they gave it like a 9.3. Mm-hmm. And then I listened to a podcast where they talk about it, again, with no spoilers. Mm-hmm. I think that's all I want to do. Now, it's not going to be hard because it's like two days away. Um, but I'm super excited to get it. And I just... I don't know. It's one of those games where I'm like, do I want to digest everything I can or do I kind of want to... I'm full, I don't want to eat anymore, type thing. Yeah, I think there's a limit to it. You want to you want to get excited about it, but you don't want to get so caught in the moment that it, like, kills the actual experience. That's kind of like with Star Wars, Episode Seven. nothing could have killed Mike Sutton for that movie. But with, like, Rogue One, yeah. I don't think we went nearly as far into the, the theories about what's going to oh, happen. Oh, yeah, we didn't, like, Star Wars, we dove into it. Yeah, over every episode little thing. seven. Yeah, and and I don't know with episode eight how we're going to do with that either. I think it'll be less than seven. Seven was just so momentous because sort of a new trilogy. It's yep. been years since we've had it. Super excited for it. Uh, I'm sure we're going to talk about stuff, but I don't know if we're going to go to the same extent we did with that. And that part of that is I don't want, like, I want to have a good experience with it. Also, part of it is because we already discussed what the script is. For the rest of the Star Wars movies. Well, we we wrote the next two Star Wars yeah. movie, trilogy movies. So we've and gone amazing. We've gone pretty deep in. Anything less than what we've decided is going to be less. That's true. So we already have 100 percent expectations for our own story. Mm-hmm. We'll see how we'll see how Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy. We'll yeah. see how they meet meet our expectations right. with what we've written. Oh, man. So I don't know. Super mm-hmm. excited for Horizon. My work schedule got changed. Yeah. So I was supposed to work. 2 p.m. till 9.15 Monday and Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, p.m. to p.m. Uh, mm-hmm. But now, Monday, I'm working like 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. So I'll come home and like eat dinner or whatever. I think I'll go out midnight, get the game, mm-hmm. and install it. Probably go to sleep, wake up early and play it until I go to work at 2. Yeah. But I haven't decided yet. I don't know. See? What, you're... So how much of a break do you have once the trimester's over? Well, I have Monday off. That's it? Yeah, I just have tomorrow off. So trimester ends Tuesday? It ended Friday. We get a, a teacher work day to finish grading and get the next trimester set up. Okay. And then that starts Tuesday. Tuesday? So you have all new students? Yep. All new classes mm-hmm. for the rest of the week? Oh, yeah. That's weird. Is there about like... So you do a year-long schedule. Mm-hmm. Is there like a two, three-week break period in every trimester? No. Is that how that works or how's that work? We don't do year-round school. Which is, like, the longer breaks between some trimesters. Yeah. Uh, we still end, like, around the normal time for, like, an extended summer, like a like a nine-week summer, I think. Okay. Um, so we just have, I mean, we have, like, a week-long spring break, week-long fall break. And we have a two-week-long Christmas break, and that's pretty much it. We get out at the end of May. Fun. Yeah. Right when prey comes out. That's right. Pray for May. May for prey. May pray. It's Patrick Stewart. Yes. Speaking of another thing, uh, one of my favorite actors. Yeah? What an amazing guy. Loved him in Star Trek The Next Generation. Definitely my favorite captain in Star Trek. Wow. Loved him as Professor X for all these years. Though I've not That's been true. a huge fan of X-Men, I have always been a fan of Professor X. Yeah. Uh, and what he's done. 
Uh, word on the street from him himself. He talked on a podcast to oh a podcast we have yeah, one of this the Independent, and he this was a quote from what he said direct quote uh, paraphrased. He was sit he was sitting watching Logan with Hugh Jackman. Uh, and he, this is the quote: Hugh was sitting next to me with James Mangold on the other side of him, and the audience were clearly very caught up in it, and it was very satisfying. It got into the last five or six minutes of the movie, and Hugh's hand came over, and he took mine, and he squeezed my hand. <laughs> he looked at me, and he had big tears, and of course, that sent me off. Here we are, the two X-Men wiping away the tears at our own movie. And then I thought, while we were watching, my God, this is a good by ending. What can I possibly do to, to top this? As I've lived... As I've lived with the idea over the past few days, I thought, yeah, it's absolutely right that we should both of us just move on now. The franchise the franchise won't die without us. It's hard to read quotes directly. It is hard to read quotes directly. <laughs> Man, I was really struggling there. Uh, yeah, so I guess... He's the, backing out. The, he's done. He's bowing out. Apparently I think he good. would have been done after X3 when he got blown up. Yeah, you. I would think that too, but... Not then we got another trilogy, <laughs> and then we got the new. X-Men. We got another trilogy, and this so is this. I think it's. I think it's time. I think he's right. I think the franchise won't die without him. And well, they also have uh, James McAvoy, who was also Professor X. Yeah. So there's two of them, and it's James McAvoy does a good Professor X. He does for he, the most part. He's a good su- successor, I would say. Yeah. Patrick Stewart was a great Professor X. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that, and I, I'm a little bit sad to see him go, but at the same time, it makes sense in the franchise yeah. for him to leave now. Mm-hmm. Because the old storyline is kind of done. They're going to be following the new X-Men with the new guys. Yep. And that's fine. And Hugh Jackman needs to go, too. Like, we've had enough X-Men Wolverine movies. This that's is true. just another Wolverine movie. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it's good if they're crying. I don't know. Or they're really like ha- they're having their moment, you know. Yeah. They're holding hands at the end of the <laughs> Logan People movie. Say, I don't know. Pete, there's like I looked on Rotten Tomatoes today, and Logan's already rated at like a ninety six. Like, really? How is that even possible? It hasn't came out yet. Again, it comes out March third. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. That'll be interesting. We'll watch that movie, and we'll we'll let you know talk about it at least. Yeah, I mean, I'm just sad to see Patrick go from anything, and the, and you know Patrick for same basis. Yeah, me and Patrick, we go back pretty me, far. Me and Patty. It's just one of those things where, you know, older actors, are, they're starting to, you know, they're only going to get older. It's better for him to sad. quit on his own terms That's than right. quit on the universe's terms. Right. <laughs> I just, it just makes me sad because I've watched him for so many years. That's true. He'll be in other things. He will be. All right. Let's so, <laughs> I'm what sad I, over here. the greatest places to shop, if you know how to do it, is Target. That's right. And I say that because you can make registries for almost anything. Birthdays, weddings, graduations, and once you do that, Mm -hmm. you then get 15% off coupons for literally the rest of the year. Nice. And you don't even, like, you can just do a fake registry. Just buy anything in Target to 15% off. All you have to do is put it on your registry, then go in with your coupon and be like, I didn't get this from the thing I wanted. Like, okay, here's 15% off. Nice. So that's great. That's an amazing thing. That's how I got my PS4 for negative dollars. <laughs> I made money off of getting a new PS4. However, Target has revealed the sequel to the, one of a, a good game that we both of us played. It's a great game. Which is, well, except for the ending. Which is Shadow of Mordor. I didn't like it. You're right. I forgot about the ending, but I really <laughs> enjoyed playing this game. So Shadow of Mordor was fun. came out a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Now getting a sequel called Shadow of War. Mm. Middle Earth Shadow of War. Which was leaked on the Target's website. Um, that's the, It was just a, a screenshot of the cover. Nice. That's literally it. But yeah, That's exciting, though. That is exciting. It was a really good game. It was uh, it was that classic like Assassin's Creed feel, but yeah. with enough twists and their own spin on it that made it feel unique. Like the whole rival system. That was, was so much fun. The rival system was a lot of fun. It was so much fun to work, like, play with. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I kind of want to go back and play it right now that we talk about this. But I have other things to play. Gosh dang it. i got to do other things You're first. right, you do. I need more time to play games. Uh, so last night, mm-hmm. uh, when it's all Lego Batman. Did you? All spur of the moment. I really wanted to go see it this weekend, but I didn't have time. Oh. Turns out, hilarious. Really? So good. I liked it. I was laughing. I mean, with the movie theater we went to, it was Friday night. It was a Saturday night at... 7.20 at night. So peak movie going time, you would yeah, think. Yeah. They had us in the biggest theater yeah. and literally less than half full. Yeah, nice. There was like nobody there. Nice. Mostly kids, um, which is great. And I was watching it and there's so many references to so many different things. Mm-hmm. And I wrote down my favorites. But there's so many different references that I was laughing my head off 
And all these kids around me were not laughing. <laughs> like, it's because you do not get it. Because That's there's so funny. much stuff. So there's references, like, literally every 30 seconds mm-hmm. that made me laugh. I could not stop laughing. So funny. I highly recommend it. I wrote down my two, which are not spoilers so much. They're just funny. Um, they happen within the first, like, five minutes of the movie. Okay. Um, so essentially, the movie starts with the Joker, um, who is played by Zach Galifianakis, mm-hmm. uh, is has a big, large... He hijacks a plane that's full of bombs, and then he makes a big bomb, and he puts it on uh, the center of Gotham City, because in this universe, there's nothing below Gotham City. It's just an endless chasm of oh, nothingness. Dang it. So his plan is to blow the tectonic plates and have Gotham kind of succumb to a giant hole. Yeah. Um, so the way he's done that is he's grabbed a whole bunch of what they call C-list villains, which are literally villains... Hundreds and hundreds of villains that you've probably never heard of. That mm-hmm. most people have never heard of. So, like, Calendar Man, Condiment Man, who literally shoots mustard and ketchup. <laughs> like, all these other things. There's Catwoman there. There's all these other people. Catwoman is more famous. Yeah. And there's, sure. like, Clayface and Bane um, and uh, Killer Croc and stuff. Nice. So, there's all these people, and it's super funny. It's all happening super fast. And Killer Croc, the, the bomb needs to be placed underwater. Killer Croc gets the bomb and places it underwater. And then while he's placing it, he says, oh, I did something. Which is an exact reference to Suicide Squad, where he does <laughs> nothing in the whole game, the whole movie. That's true. And like that's one of the funniest movements. And then also in this universe, Bruce Wayne, Batman, same person. He has a the Batcave is under Bruce Wayne Manor, which is on its own island. Mm-hmm. So he's driving there, and you'll appreciate this. I will. The password to the Batcave is Iron Man sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're essentially the same characters. Yes. In just two different universes. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. So eventually, like. Towards the end of the movie, Batman gets uh, some partners to mm-hmm. help fight crime, and they all know the password, so they're saying Iron Man sucks like, all the time to get in. So funny. Um, awesome. Highly recommend it to anybody. It's not really a movie that's that you can spoil. Mm. Um, essentially, oh, I guess there's some other things. Uh, essentially, Joker decides that the C-list villains he was using to conquer Gotham were not good enough, mm-hmm. so he goes and gets some A-list villains, mm-hmm. which include King Kong, <laughs> Sauron, nice. <from> what? <laughs> Voldemort, <laughs> the Wicked Witch of the West. Wow, that's uh, awesome. Um, the Flying Monkeys from The Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. So many other things, and they're all making all these references. There's it's what like it was good at. Yeah, it's so funny. They, they have all these, all these deals with all Warner these different Brothers groups. deals. Yeah. I highly, highly recommend this movie. Literally, so funny to to uh, to watch. Um, there was the in credit scene. There wasn't like a post in credit scene. There's just like the in credit scene. Is a reference to this slightly obscure '80s aerobic video <laughs> that nobody would have gotten. I I know it because I've seen it on different people's streams and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like, so they all come out and they watch and they dance all the Lego characters, mm-hmm. and then they made it beat for beat the same as the '80s aerobic video. Nice. And Emily's like, okay, this is funny. And then I've gotten to the car and I showed her the aerobic video. She's like, this is beat for beat the exact same thing. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. And I tweeted that video out after I saw it. So if you want to see what the video looks like, you can get on our Twitter page. But Oh my goodness, it was so good. So good. That sounds awesome. So much better than like... Um, Batman v Superman? Yeah, that's <laughs> But I think better than uh, just the Lego movie in general. Really? This one had, I guess it was more niche. Yeah. But they also had, they're going to make a Lego Ninjago movie. Which is like the Ninja Battle Robots movie. I don't yeah. know. Essentially, they have a whole bunch of Lego movies planned. And I don't know how long they can keep these movies coming out. And keep them being good. Although, you can say the same thing about Marvel, and they've been doing it for 10 years. Right. So, I don't know. I don't Star necessarily Wars know what to say. Like Star like Wars. 30 plus years. Um, but I feel like eventually it's just going to get, like... The same thing over and over again? Yeah, you'd think so. I don't know I don't know what to expect for a Lego movie. Sure. They're also going to make, like, a Lego Nightwing movie, stuff like that. I don't know. Hmm. But, so, so good. So funny. I would watch... I'd probably watch it again and get... It's one of those game movies where you'd watch it again to get more of the references. Mm-hmm. But... And it, it, it was like an hour and a half long, um, which is a standard good movie time. Mm-hmm. So, highly recommend Especially it. for like a kid's movie like yeah. this. And they made fun of Iron Man, which is always a plus. I know, you love that. I love that. <sighs> Dang. So, I'm getting ready for Horizon, as we discussed and we're coming back to. That's true. I'm getting so ready that I cleaned up my workplace. I like dusted my desk. So I guess it, it is way cleaner because I used cleaner. to look back in the corner and it was just like dust haven. Well, I mean, it's hard to get back there. It is. And you don't really do anything. 